The radius of convergence of a power series is the distance from the center C at which the series will converge. The interval of convergence is the range of x values within which the series will converge. Our first scenario is if the ratio test gives us a value of 0. If your ratio test gives you a value of 0, then your power series converges for all x. This would make our radius of convergence infinity, so our interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity. This means that x can be any number and the series will still converge. Scenario number two, what if your ratio is equal to infinity? Then your series diverges for all x except x equals c, because when x is equal to c, you will get zero for everything. Your interval of convergence would simply be the value c, and since this is not a range or an interval of values, your radius would just be zero. And if our outcome of the ratio test is 1 over r, absolute value, x minus c, and it will usually appear in this form, then we could solve for our radius of convergence. The result of the ratio test must be less than 1 in order to have a convergent series. Now the R in this formula stands for radius of convergence, which is really convenient. We just need to solve for x to find the interval of convergence. This makes our interval of convergence negative r plus c comma r plus c. For the geometric series test, your common ratio or the absolute value of your common ratio must be less than one. But for the ratio test, less than one gives you a convergent series. Equal to one doesn't mean it's divergent though. Equal to one just means inconclusive. So the thing about our interval is we don't actually know if these inequality symbols are simply less than, or if one or both of them should be less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. That tends to be the most tedious part of the ratio test for interval of convergence because you don't immediately have your interval. You will need to determine if the endpoints cause it to converge or diverge. You will need to check each endpoint separately. Let's try some examples. Here is a sub n. Let's find a sub n plus 1 and use the ratio test. Expand so you're able to reduce. As n approaches infinity, we want to take the terms of highest degree. And those n's will then reduce. We'll have absolute value 2x. And the limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value 2x is absolute value 2x. We can actually evaluate absolute value 2 or take it out so it would be 2 and then absolute value x. That means the ratio test gave us a value 2 absolute value x meaning we will be able to find an interval of convergence for this because it is in the form 1 over r absolute value x minus c. To determine the interval of convergence, I'll make 2 absolute value x less than 1 and solve for x. So our interval of convergence goes from negative 1 half to 1 half. But it is super important that we check if it is negative one half inclusive or not inclusive, and check if it is one half inclusive or not inclusive. Our first endpoint is negative one half. So x equals negative one half is what I'll plug in first into the original series.
Simplify the series notation. This simplifies to be negative 1 to the n over n. What series is that? That is the alternating harmonic series, and that converges by alternating series test. Let's check x equals 1 half. This series is the harmonic series, and that diverges. So when x is equal to positive 1 half, we get a divergent series, meaning 1 half is not inclusive. This makes our interval of convergence negative 1 half inclusive to 1 half not inclusive. And our radius of convergence is right here really just half the interval of convergence. And there's our answer. For number two, we have a sub n, and then let's find a sub n plus one. Now use the ratio test. Expand so that you may reduce. We now have the limit as n approaches infinity, but there are no n's left, so we can take off our limit notation. And then also we can take that absolute value off of the 1 half, or just evaluate absolute value of 1 half is 1 half. So here's the result for our ratio test. Again, we have scenario three where we will get an interval of convergence that is finite and is not the center. To find our interval of convergence, we make the result of our ratio test less than 1. That makes our interval of convergence from negative 3 to 1, but we're not quite sure yet if it is inclusive or non-inclusive for negative 3 and 1. So we're going to check the endpoints. When x equals negative 3, our resulting series is negative 1 to the n. To determine whether negative 1 to the n converges or diverges, that is a geometric alternating series. So using the geometric series test, you have absolute value r must be less than 1. Because this is not true, this series diverges by the geometric series test. Let's check when x equals 1. So you may be able to imagine, okay, if we're adding one infinitely many times, then that will diverge. You can also do the nth term test where the limit as n approaches infinity of one is not zero. So this diverges by nth term test. Making our interval of convergence negative three to one not inclusive. And our radius of convergence is two. If this were free response and you didn't show that you checked the endpoints, you would lose points. So you have to show that you have checked the endpoints when using the ratio test to find the interval of convergence of a power series. Let's do number three. Expand n plus 1 factorial to be n plus 1 times n factorial.
Even if we take the absolute value of x out of the limit entirely, we would still get infinity times absolute value x. That's infinity. This is scenario two. When the ratio test gives you infinity, then your interval of convergence is a single number, c, the center of the series. using the ratio test. We'll expand this factorial, so after 2n plus 2, it will be 2n plus 1, and then 2n plus 0, and I'll stop there. Time to reduce. Because n is approaching positive infinity, I only need terms of highest degree when it comes to n, and I don't need absolute value. This result is zero. Absolute value of negative is positive, so absolute value x squared, which we already know is positive, so it could be even simply x squared. But either way, when our result is zero, which is what we have here, then our interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity, making our radius of convergence infinity.